Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> this first hour we are going to continue our uh, discussion on the some different types of medical instrumentation used in hospital and clinical setup. So one of them is the medical ultrasonography. I think this is quite common now. Almost every big hospital has it. And although it is still rare yeah, to find this in uh, small clinics or uh, yeah, unfortunately. So <clears throat> while maybe it is quite uh, important already that people already know it's used to prevent uh, also to diagnose yeah, some abnormalities, for example, in during the pregnancy, but also abnormalities in the stomach area. However, its use is not that prevalent yet in smaller clinics. So this is actually one of the challenges yeah, from biomedical engineering perspective. Uh, maybe uh, challenges for you who would like to take this challenge to develop smaller instrumentation, lower cost, portable that can be used in uh, inside the clinics, yeah? inside small clinics. Even now, would it maybe it would be possible, for example, to develop <clears throat> uh, something that can be uh, used uh, portably, yeah? so outside the clinical setup maybe by the patient at home, for example, um, or not necessarily directly by the patient, but by the medical specialist, but uh, at, at home. Okay, so the slide is courtesy of my colleague, my former colleague, Dr. Sophie Kasaidian from University of Technology Malaysia. I borrowed from her. So first, we are going to introduce about ultrasound wave and then um, acoustical impedance, yeah, the, uh, one of the physical properties important, which is important in uh, ultrasonic uh, instrumentation. Then the ultrasound transducer itself, you know, how, how is it made? What is it composed of? So actually, this we have... Um, Touch a little bit, we have discussed a little bit in semester four, in the previous semester, in the my material uh, class, as well as in the sensors and transducer, sensors and measurement class. Yeah, we introduced a little bit about uh, the transducer use for ultrasonography, yeah, which is basically made from piezo electric material. Then we introduce a bit about ultrasound energy, the scan modes, and the biological effect of ultrasonography. Then some application of ultrasonography itself. Uh, for example, the Doppler effect. So this is commonly used not for imaging only, but also to know the <clears throat> some physical, some additional physical parameters within the body, for example, like the blood flow yeah so that's why here then the next application to use ultrasonography as a flow meter non-invasive flow meter then uh, using ultrasonography to brain uh, to detect and diagnose or image the brain yeah what we call as electroencephalography we did we, we, we i think we had introduced this a little bit in the previous session yeah on brain and uh, nervous system uh, instrumentation. Yeah. Echoencephalography is one method to, uh, to image the brain. Okay, oops, okay, no, no. So <clears throat> what is ultrasound? So ultrasound itself, as the name implies, it is an ultrasonic wave, acoustical waves above the range of human hearing. So uh, our ears can hear uh, between 20 hertz to about 20,000 hertz, yeah, 20 kilohertz. And so the ultrasound usually 
is any sound above that frequency. So above the 20 kilohertz frequency. Normally it is, however, less than 100 kilohertz. If it were less than 20 hertz, then we call it infrasound. Yeah, infra so it has similar frequency as the radio wave, but they are different. Yeah, If radio wave is a, a form of electromagnetic wave, yeah, so it means that it is basically an oscillation of electric field and magnetic field together, yeah, electromagnetic field. Acoustic, uh, ultrasonic wave, on the other hand, is acoustical wave. So it means that uh, as an acoustical wave, it needs some medium. The material itself becomes the medium to propagate the wave. Yeah, If it were in the air, then it will be the air. If it were the, our body, then it is the material that composes our body, the fluid, uh, the organ, the tissue, etc. <clears throat> so ultrasound wave is oscillation alternating current connected to a transducer. <clears throat> yeah, so it uh, it is generated from a transducer that generate the uh, uh, frequency of the electric voltage, the electronic voltage into uh, mechanical uh, oscillation. Yeah, mechanical oscillation. Which is usually uh, propagate uh, uh, in line, so uh, longitudinally. So it is kind of longitudinal wave, yeah, because it is an acoustic wave. Longitudinal wave means that the amplitude is at the same direction as the propagation of the wave. Radio wave or electromagnetic wave in general is an oscillation alternating current connected to an antenna. So the alternating current connected to antenna then uh, resulting in the, uh, uh, the uh, in the propagation of electric and magnetic field or electromagnetic field as wave. So having said this, uh, the, the, this, how they are made of, then we know that ultrasound wave require a medium of propagation. It can be liquid. It can be uh, material, solid material. It can also be air. Uh, radio wave, on the other hand, does not need any medium. So radio or electromagnetic wave can travel even in the vacuum. While ultrasonic wave, ultrasonic wave cannot travel in vacuum. <clears throat> so ultrasonic wave consists of alternating zone, zones of compression and rarefaction. Yeah? So if in a physical medium, so as I mentioned, it is basically a form of longitudinal wave in the sense that the oscillation is in the same direction yeah, as the propagation direction. So uh, for example, if this is the function of pressure as a function of uh, as a function of time, yeah, as a function of time, here the pressure changes. Yeah, the pressure changes as a function of time with a certain period, and with, uh, so of course certain lambda, the wavelength, and uh, so the in the some part of the air will be compressed, and the other part is uh, what do you call it, uncompressed or ex, uh, expanded, yeah? which is called as rarefaction. Rarefaction. So uh, if in the uh, the opposite of longitudinal wave, yeah, in the perpendicular wave, the amplitude is <clears throat> a perpendicular yeah, uh, compared to the propagation. In longitudinal wave, like an acoustic wave, which in this case it is the ultrasound, the amplitude is the same direction as the, the oscillation is at the same direction of the propagation. This oscillation propagates. Uh, towards the line of that uh, oscillation, the similar line. Okay. <clears throat> so in the rarefaction area, the pressure will decrease. Yeah, the pressure will uh, will, will 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 decrease, or uh, it has uh, not decreased, but uh, the amplitude, the lambda will be longer, and the period will be longer compared to the compressed area. So. The frequency here is defined as the number of complete cycles per unit of time. F is equal to one over time. 
the period of the wave is the time required to complete one cycle. So the wavelength here is the distance traveled by one cycle, for example, from here to back to here, from here back to here, okay, depending on where you start. The distance traveled by one cycle propagating away from the source, okay, the distance between two positive peaks or two negative peaks, okay, like in the cosine uh, function. Okay, then, so this is how it looks like. Yeah, this is a longitudinal wave. Okay, and now it transverse wave, yeah, the perpendicular wave is transverse wave. So electromagnetic wave, like light, yeah, for example, X-ray, they are transverse wave. The oscillation of the electric field or magnetic field is perpendicular to the propagation uh, direction. Uh, acoustic wave, on the other hand, like ultrasound, is a longitudinal wave. Again, yeah, so the oscillation is at the same direction as the propagation. Okay, not perpendicular, but instead is uh, the same direction, the same line. So because in, in, in that line of propagation, there is an area which is being compressed, and there is an area of medium which is being rarefacted yeah, or rarefaction. That, 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 uh, uh, that exhibit or rarefaction of phenomena. So in longitudinal form, the wave propagate in the same direction as the zone of compression and rarefaction. In the transverse form of wave, the wave propagate in the direction orthogonal or perpendicular to the direction of the zones of compression and rarefaction. <clears throat> so this is ultrasound wave. Um, pictured as a pressure, as a function of time or distance, okay? So it has an amplitude, positive peak and negative peak, okay? And the absolute of the amplitude, or positive peak um, amplitude equals the absolute value of the negative uh, peak amplitude. So here the amplitude is defined as a difference between the zero baseline here and either peak, either the positive peak or the negative peak. So typical value for medical ultrasonography, ultrasound in the doctor system is four megapascal. Yeah, between the zero pascal and the maximum compression or maximum reflection is four megapascal. So here, the positive peak is about three megapascal, the negative peak is uh, about two megapascal. So the amplitude of this ultrasonic signal is directly related to the power being supplied by the electronics to the transducer in watts. Okay, so the velocity in ultrasonic wave, ultrasound wave, is defined as the speed of propagation of the wave. So if light speed is 300 million meter per second or 300,000 kilometer per second, ultrasound wave velocity in tissue is quite fast, yeah, but not that fast not as fast as light of course so it travels with speed of uh, velocity of 1500 meter per second yeah. so this is faster than the velocity of uh, sound in air yeah. because why because the medium is of course denser in tissue compared to the air so the wave velocity v equals to the frequency times the lambda yeah. uh, how many times it uh, oscillates in a second frequency times the wavelength, uh, the distance yeah, of the between the between peaks, between uh, peak to peak yeah, in a single wave. That is a wavelength times the frequency results in the velocity meter per second. So in air, for example, the sound velocity is 330 meter per second. Okay, so not that fast. In bone, however, since it has a uh, much denser than uh, in air yeah, at 25 degrees Celsius, 1.85 gram per centimeter square, the sound velocity is much higher, 3,360 meter per second. In muscles, which has less density compared to bone, the speed is less, 1,570 meter per second. In fat, a little bit less also than muscle. Uh, the density so the velocity sound velocity also less 
1480 meter per second. In blood, since it is liquid, yeah, uh, it's quite big as well, with one gram per cubic centimeter, 1560 meter per second. So basically, it is this. This is one of the uh, characteristic, yeah, which is being exploited in ultrasonography, because air, sorry, because ultrasound has different velocities across the different tissues in our body, and they will reach the transducer at different times. They will be scattered differently, yeah, at different tissue. And this can be then reconstructed in uh, as image. Okay, so um, this is similar the wave phenomena when it travels between materials or medium having different density. So, for example, this is incident uh, light ray. Yeah, it has an angle of incident theta one. Some of it will be reflected, yeah, which is called the reflection phenomena, which will have a reflection angle, angle of reflection theta one uh, prime, yeah, which is it should be the same as theta one that reflected light. Some of it will be refracted. Uh, yeah, this refracted light ray, which we call uh, you, you see there is a Snell's law yeah, in for refraction and uh, with an angle of theta two from the normal. Normal is a line perpendicular to the interface between the two medium. How much is theta two depends on the index of refraction. So index of refraction. refraction is the ratio of the velocity of the wave in air to the wave velocity in that medium. Okay, so this is what, well, this is actually uh, derived by Snell for light, yeah, for electromagnetic wave, but actually the same uh, happens with the uh, acoustical wave, yeah with uh, what do you call it with with, with mechanical wave are you still there there are videos but no people there yes. <laughs> no persons is in laura and then only the background image also maria So some is refracted, some is reflected, some is refracted, and some, well, it already travels inside the second medium, is being uh, scattered. Yeah, we call it scattered. Yeah. Uh, maybe bunching a particle or something inside that denser matter. So it's being scattered, although this part is maybe smaller amount compared to the refracted and reflected part. So if we draw it like this, so this is uh, illustrating the reflected reflection phenomena. So this is illustrating the, the, uh, the yellow or uh, orange part here, illustrating the, what do you call it? The reflection phenomena yeah, being, being uh, deflected and then still travels and then being reflected again when it goes out. Then some, the blue part here, uh, illustrating uh, the phenomena of absorption and re-radiation. So this is being absorbed, actually, but then some of it is being radiated back by the second medium. And here is the diffraction phenomena, similar to reflection, yeah, that, however, it is different because the angle of uh, the diffracted is not the same as the angle of this incoming uh, incoming light or incoming wave so relative index of refraction between two media is defined as the sin theta one yeah, divided by sin theta two or v one divided by v two yeah it depends on the velocity so here we see that if um, the wave coming from air to our body to which is denser Okay, then we can expect that sin theta two will be higher than sin theta one. Okay, so it will be refracted away from the normal uh, line, yeah, from the perpendicular normal perpendicular line, because it travels 
faster than in the air. So, <clears throat> so this is how different phenomena that occurs in ultrasound wave is being illustrated here. Transmission is when it still goes at the same line of the incoming uh, wave. Reflected is when it bounces off the surface of the interaction between the different medium. Then refraction is where it is deflected. It goes through the medium, but then deflected. The, 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 the direction is being deflected. Diffraction here is it is spreading. So it, it is as if the point of interaction between the different medium becomes a, a source of itself. Yeah, this is the diffraction phenomena. Adsorption is when the wavelength is being absorbed. The wave is being absorbed as energy inside the medium. And scattered here is when the incoming wave is being spread into, but not as like diffraction. Yeah? Scattered is more random compared to the diffraction. So diffraction is the bending of the direction of propagation that occurs when a wave impinges on an object of different density embedded within or and surrounded by the incident media. So in ultrasound, <laughs> result, uh, resulting in uh, multiple reflected wave, yeah, which will then give rise to the uh, scattering yeah, with ultrasound. So uh, an incident light yeah, will then be reflected. This is There is a diffuse reflection here a diffuse reflection will have a random direction, yeah, and almost in all direction, and at each each uh, angle will have different intensity. Specular reflection on the other hand has will have similar angle of reflection compared to the angle of in the incident light. Single incident ray resulting in single reflected wave. Uh, this is occur, yeah. It, this is rarely occur the specular reflection because this only occur usually when the interaction surface between the different medium is very smooth. In reality, most of the surfaces of the interaction are rough, and has certain topology or topography, which will then cause a more diffuse reflection. So <clears throat> in ultrasound wave, an electric impulse is given by the electrons to the transducer here, the probe, what we call as the probe, the probe itself has a, 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 what you call it? An ultra transducer, ultrasonic uh, piezoelectric transducer, yeah, a crystal. It could, could be used to PZT. P, PZT is uh, lead zirconium titanate. Yeah, lead zirconium uh, titanate uh, crystal. And then it will transfer or co transduce, convert the electrical voltage into mechanical wave so or as a sound beam and then uh, the sound beam will be interacting with the skin with the blood with the soft tissue on the beneath the skin and goes to the organ uh, underneath it okay so the organ will be interacting with this wave it will give a direct echo or otherwise indirect echo through other tissue or organ in its surrounding so indirect echo will cause noise and which some uh, which need to be corrected by using first pulse arrival of the circuit so there is a multipath phenomena in ultrasound wave applied to body and yeah, this uh, ultrasound transducer serve in this case as both transmitter and receiver it transmits the wave and it receives the incoming echo or indirect echo okay? that's why in sensor and transducer uh, sensor and measurement subject i explained already that uh, a transducer this one is more general as a transducer because it acts basically as both actuator and sensor it acts as actuator because it converts the electrical voltage or impulse into acoustical wave and then receive the acoustical wave or uh, receive it and then convert it into electrical voltage. The time between the successive pulses, the T, the period, is the maximum distance that the system can image when receiving this echo signal. Oops. 
Okay, now the second uh, subject of topics is the acoustical impedance. Yeah? This is symbolized by ZA, which is defined as the efficiency with which the signal propagates in the material. Yeah, ZA. The unit is rail. Yeah, R A Y L. Rail. One rail is one kilogram per uh, square meter second, or 0 0.1 gram per square centimeter second second okay so basically it is similar like electric impedance however this is for the mechanical wave of the acoustical uh, ultrasonic yeah? ultrasonic wave so here the za or the acoustical impedance equals to the zeta yeah? this is zeta or if you write it down Okay. Yeah, this is zeta, yeah. This is uh, Greek letter called as the zeta. Zeta v. Uh, zeta here is density of the medium in grams. Zeta or rho, yeah. it should be rho actually. The density of the medium in gram per cubic centimeter, and v is the velocity of the sound in the medium. Okay. So, uh, for example, here calculate the acoustical impedance of water. If the velocity of sound in water is 1450 meters per second and the density of water at body temperature is 0.99 gram per centimeter cubic, so the answer will be 148 for 500 gram per, centi, per square centimeter per second. Okay. So this is this multiplied to this density. That will be the acoustical impedance. Yeah, the efficiency with which the signal propagates in the material. The higher the velocity, it means then the higher the acoustical impedance. So this table shows different acoustic impedance for specular reflection by acoustic wave crossing the material interface. So for example, this is the body, uh, this is the body tissue, the impedance is 400. The air, yeah, the air, so it, it has uh, smaller, smaller value. That's because then it has the smallest efficiency of uh, acoustical wave transfer. Yeah? According to the definition, the efficiency with which the signal propagates in that material. Uh, bone, as we can see here, do we have bone here? Yeah, maybe similar to bone. Yeah, here the skull bone. The value of the impedance is 7.86 million kilogram per square meter per second. So it has higher acoustical impedance, much higher compared to air, because the efficiency of the signal is very high in bone. It can travel very fast compared to other, for example, blood. This blood, yeah, 1.65, yeah, uh, still quite big value. However, it is less than uh, the skull bone. Okay? And uh, here, enamel and diamond, which represent some of the hardest material, yeah, it has the highest acoustical impedance. Why it is included as body tissue? Yeah. Actually, diamond. Yeah, maybe do, do we have diamond inside our body? I'm not sure. Okay, now hey, this is only again good. Sorry, I'm going too fast. Yeah. Okay. What are the transducer yeah, in uh, made or, or used for the ultrasonography? So I have mentioned that it is usually they are piezoelectric material. So the transmitter part of the ultrasonic transducer will convert AC oscillation, alternating current, uh, electric, alternating current voltage into acoustical vibration. Then it has the receiver part of the ultrasonographic transducer that will convert the incoming acoustical vibration, the scattered or reflected uh, acoustical vibration from the tissue, uh, convert them back into electrical oscillation. So at higher frequency, the ultrasound transducer is made of piezoelectric resonator or crystal resonator, or just crystal. It can be made using natural quartz, yes, silicon dioxide, remember your uh, class in uh, my material last semester, barium titanate, rosal salts, and lead zirconate. 
Titanet. Yeah, let's recon this is EZT basically. Let's recon the Titanet is EZT. What is the chemical formula? Uh, check back your uh, your note yeah, last semester. So the transducer will produce a voltage across their two surfaces when they are deformed or deformed if a voltage is placed across the element from this from those same surfaces. Okay. So this is uh, basically this is the principle of piezoelectric piezoelectricity, yeah, which we had discussed earlier in this. Uh, course yeah, in the earlier weeks, also in the last semester. So when the voltage is a stress like this, when you apply voltage, yeah, higher voltage, then the material will be deformed. Okay, Like this, it is in being compressed. But when you apply different voltage again, but with different polarity, the material is being stretched. So by oscillating the voltage across the terminals of this material, this piezoelectric material, then you can make the piezoelectric material to compress and uh, expand, compress, expand, compress, expand, then they will generate mechanical wave. Then if it is very high in frequency, they will become ultrasound wave. Yeah. This is what we call as bulk acoustical transducer. We have also surface acoustical transducer, but surface acoustical transducer is not normally used for ultrasonography. Instead, surface acoustical wave transducer is more being used as a sensor, yeah, as a sensor rather than as an active transducer. So this is uh, the working phenomena of ultrasonic transducer. We have, for example, here one megahertz with uh, an ultrasonic transducer. Uh, <clears throat> oscillating with one megahertz frequency yeah and this is the what we call is the Fraunhofer zone where the beam is mostly dispersed okay? the beam dispersed proportionally to the square of the distance in the Fresnel zone here yeah, it is close to the transducer interface so this is the transducer yeah, the beam does not disperse much yeah, in this Fresnel zone rather it is more of uh, coherent or uh, linear yeah? The beam does not disperse much. So when it goes to the Fraunhofer zone, then it starts to disperse and proportionally to the square of the distance. Then using inverse square law, we can calculate the power density at uh, that particular uh, wave front. Yeah? The power density at this particular wave front equals to the total power being divided by the area of this wave front. We see that when we are further away, from the transducer at, at the Fraunhofer zone, then the power density will be reduced a lot. Yeah, because the area is a function of the square of the distance, right? Uh, from the volume area of a ball. The farther the wave, the lower the power density. If we want to maintain a uh, enough power density at certain uh, wave and usually we need to uh, enhance the energy of that ultrasonic transducer by for example enhancing the frequency so <clears throat> this is um, for example an example of ultrasonic transducer okay it has a fresnel zone and has a fraunhofer zone this is the side lobe and this will be the primary beam in the middle Rear transistor not only produces the main lobe, yeah, but also spurious side lobe yeah, on the surrounding. These side lobes sometimes will receive and uh, send pulses, causes the formation of non-valid echoes and clutter in the image. Yeah, the side lobe, which we don't want actually. Yeah, it will also interact with the surrounding tissue and creating pulses and which will become artifacts in the reconstructed image. Yeah. So this is the main beam whose uh, response to the tissue we want, but however, it will always generate the side lobes. Side lobes tend to be balanced yeah, between in the surrounding and appear as plus minus theta from the central line. The loss of energy in the transmitted ultrasonic wave is caused by 
the beam spreading as mentioned earlier in the slide yeah, the in the front hover zone then when it interacts with the biological tissue it will further reduce the energy because of the different acoustical impedance and also because of signal scattering due to the different uh, the, 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 the tissue itself which contain different density and different materials and particles inside the total loss or attenuation called alpha variable equals to the beam with loss plus the scattering loss plus the absorption loss okay. so there are three factors that in uh, that is incorporated in the total loss attenuation first is by the beam width itself yeah by the beam spreading the scattering this one the signal scattering and then absorption when it interacts with the biological tissue let's now discuss first the attenuation by the absorption this will depends by on the acoustical impedance <clears throat> of that material or tissue as well as the frequency used so when the acoustical impedance is higher okay acoustical impedance is higher so it means for example in bone yeah the harder material in tissue in our body the loss of the ultrasound energy will also be uh, higher so it will be much loss in bone compared to in the blood or in the fat for example when frequency is also higher the loss or attenuation will also be higher this is for example the frequent uh, the coefficient yeah, of loss attenuation alpha in different medium so in air it was only lost about 12 decibel per centimeter water is somehow the most efficient medium where ultrasound can propagate yeah. that is why the loss is very small 0 0.002 uh, in bone it is the, the highest of loss is the alpha the loss is 15 decibel per centimeter in kidney it is one in other soft tissue it is less than one yeah in uh, 0 0.7 0 0.63 in blood is only 0 0.18 so here it is a graph here so in muscle it has higher loss uh, attenuation coefficient compared to in liver and compared to blood okay and the higher the frequency of the signal also the attenuation coefficient alpha will also increase So now attenuation by uh, scattering, but uh, before that, let's have a break. Okay, so the second cause of uh, att uh, attenuation, yeah. So the first cause was due to the absorption by. I, I, sorry, sorry, excuse me. By absorption, yeah, the first cause of uh, signal attenuation or energy power attenuation of the ultrasound is due to the absorption by the tissue. Second cause is due to the scattering. Yeah. Okay, okay, this is absorption. Then scattering is when the energy is being reflected. So uh, the reflected energy is being sent in directions other than the other than back to the receiver. So it goes to other direction anywhere, random direction. So it doesn't, it's not received by the transducer anymore. So and then this also includes absorption in the target, which is reflection loss and reflection from the target. Yeah. Uh, Refraction loss and reflect reflection loss. So um, <clears throat> the attenuation due to the scattering, UI, yeah, uh, the energy here, for example, the energy of the incident signal is the sum of the energy of the reflected signal and the energy of the small r and small and large r, yeah, because by because some of this is being scattered. The percentage of UI that is reflected is given by, actually this is refracted, I think, yeah, refracted, sorry. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is due to refraction loss and reflection. Okay, so I need 
to edit this so we edit um, uh, yeah r here is the reflected the small r is the reflected so the large r can be refracted Okay, I can type here, so maybe I just put uh, here inside and the sign uh, refracted, refracted the text here. Okay. Instead of uh, reflected, yeah. Okay. Then can be we'll save this. Save. No further. <clears throat> okay. So then the percentage of UI that is reflected is being given by the coefficient of reflection, yeah, in which is uh, here uh, R, yeah intensity of the reflection coefficient in which is equals to the square of the impedance yeah, acoustical impedance one minus acoustical impedance two divided by the sum of the two acoustical impedance okay. <coughs> then <coughs> there's what we call as the time gain compensation compensation the deeper the tissue then the signal will get weaker this is caused by the attenuation, of course. To overcome this problem, the ultrasound machine is equipped with a receiver gain that varies with time after the pulse is uh, fired. Okay, the gain rise with time is called as time gain compensation (TGC) or depth gain compensation because it it is also variable of the depth. Yet the time is variable of the depth, called as the depth gain compensation. Using TGC, the same target will produce the same amplitude response on the ultrasound screen. Scanning modes, yeah, in terms uh, can be divided into three different types. Yeah. Uh, either can be A scan mode, this using stationary transistor, and pulses are being fired. A pulse is being fired into the tissue. Then the oscilloscope will read out the scan time. The time of flight, due to the time of flight of the scattered or reflected wave along the horizontal axis, this horizontal axis, and plots the signal amplitude along the vertical axis. Okay. So from here, for example, uh, you should scan A scan mode, uh, one fire, then coming back, then it is being plotted according to the time. Yeah, according to the time. And this, this time will then represent basically the depth. The depth of the uh, ultrasound wave. The scanning modes can be divided into three uh, different types. And then B scan modes. Yeah, this is the A scan mode. And the B scan mode is having uh, first is it, it uses same time base as A scan mode, but then it scan also in the other uh, axis, yeah, in the other direction. So they plots the strength of returning signal as changes in the brightness. Uh, the strong reflection is brighter. Yeah, as we see that usually when there is bone or higher density tissue, which will, which means that the acoustical impedance is higher. Uh, using Snell's law, remember the refraction law, it will be refracted away from the perpendicular uh, from the normal line. When the wave angle, the incident angle is larger than certain angle, it will be, it will have uh, reflection, yeah, full reflection. So you see that the higher density usually, the higher brightness represents those higher uh, density material. In this case, the skin, yeah, the bone compared to the soft tissue underneath it or be, uh, inside of it. 
then we have known A scan mode, B scan mode, and this is the M scan mode. Okay, so this is what is what we have now with uh, three dimensional or four dimensional uh, imaging. It is TM mode, the time motion mode. It is a scan mode, A scan mode, so virtually depth based mode, but with vertical time base. Each instantaneous position in the scan produces the depth information, time information, and intensity information on different axes. Some modern color displays go one step further by color coding the flow direction. So this is the M mode. And <clears throat> ultrasonography can have biological effects. And then the, the important factors that in the interaction, biological interaction between the tissue and ultrasonic wave are the frequency, the irradiation time, how much, how long we uh, irradiate the, the tissue with that, uh, with that uh, wave, the beam intensity, and the duty cycle. Okay. <clears throat> so the principle of my physical effects in ultrasonography is thermal captivation, shearing action intracellular motion thermal means that it caused it is caused by the sonic agitation of the cells yeah so the cells are being agitated by the ultrasound ultrasonic wave so this will affect the nature of tissues blood flow and thermal conduction losses the uh the heat energy loss is due to the absorption coefficient by that uh, tissue times the beam intensity Okay, some some of the energy of the ultrasound will be absorbed by the tissue, and this is will be transferred, converted into heat loss. Okay, it it is heating the uh, the tissue. So captivation is the creation of gaseous bubble in the fluid medium due to the agitation by ultrasonic wave. Yeah, we, we call it uh, uh, ultrasound bubbling. Yeah. Then shearing action is, you know, ultrasound wave will generate eddy currents in the medium of low viscosity that are able to flow. So it will create eddy current, you remember, in electromagnetic wave. Uh, in We studied it in the magnetic base sensor. Yeah, there is a eddy current due to the circling of the local magnetic field inside that material. Yeah. If that is for magnetic field, this one is in ultrasonic wave, so me, uh, mechanical wave, also small encircling wave in that medium because of the ultrasonic wave. Then ultrasonic wave can also cause intracellular motion. There is there will be maybe vibration of the cell membrane because being because of being influenced by the ultrasonic wave as well as some twisting action. Using the change of frequency, <clears throat> so when the receiver and transmitter move relative to each other, there will be then what we call a Doppler effect due to the frequency change. So this Doppler effect can be uh, used, can be implemented to measure or to detect motion of something inside the body, for example, blood flow later. So the frequency shift itself is determined by here FB equals to two times of the V, the frequency, and cosine uh, theta here. So I should include theta also here, actually. Later I will change here. This is, so there should be a theta here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, so... <clears throat> In continuous wave Doppler, the ultrasound will use two different crystal transducer elements. In pulse Doppler system, it is using a single crystal used for both transmitter and receiver. So for transcutaneous flow detector, they are designed to use the disk Doppler effect to detect the blood flow in arteries close to the body surface. Yeah, so transcutaneous means that it is just be in, in, in the near the surface of the skin. Yeah. An incident frequency near 10 megahertz is selected. 
to take advantage of the natural attenuation of high ultrasonic frequency in tissue. And this also permits uh, better focusing, permits larger frequency change for any given amount of motion. And reflection from the blood vessel near the surface are usually will become stronger when the incident frequency is near 10 megahertz. <clears throat> when the blood is motionless, then it will have zero shift frequency. In the motion blood, the shift of the frequency will be proportional to the blood velocity. So that's why this can be used, the Doppler effect can be used to measure the flow, the blood flow, uh, blood flow rate. Okay? So when the frequency shift is, for example, 200 hertz and the incident width is 10 megahertz, then the blood velocity is calculated as six centimeter per second. So this is the block diagram of a blood flow meter using two different crystals. So it is the type of which time yeah? uh, continuous, yeah, continuous wave droplet using two crystal transducer element to measure blood flow. So this oscillator will excite the 10 megahertz okay, to this transducer A. Yeah, will which will uh, which will uh, emit ultrasonic wave to the tissue or to the vessel here, yeah? and it has this blood flow, and the reflected or scattered ultrasound wave will be captured by the transducer B, yeah, near the transducer A. Okay, and this is captured using a uh, uh, amplifier here yeah. so uh, both oscillation from the 10 megahertz oscillator and this captured uh, will be detected by this detector and then it will detect the frequency shift plus minus delta f component then it will be filtered and then also mix and afterwards uh, this can be for example uh, to we can put it into earphones or speaker to listen to the blood flow. Then this can uh, be put into, for example, a trigger and being integrated to produce a DC voltage proportional to the flow value and then uh, used to move meter or otherwise we can also use it to uh, indicate values in a digital display, for example. Okay, so the blood flow if there's a blood flow here, then due to the Doppler effect, remember what is Doppler effect in physics? Yeah, uh, there is a shift of frequency. Frequency will be changed. The reflected wave from the blood will have different frequency compared to the incident wave. And this is proportional to the flow rate of the blood. If the blood is doesn't flow zero, then there is no delta F. Delta F will be zero. So the frequency will be the same between incident wave and the reflective wave. <clears throat> so the ultrasound can be used as well as flow meters. There is transit time ultrasound flow transducer. Depends on the velocity difference between the upstream and downstream sound wave. So this is the illustration of transit time ultrasound flow transducer. The upper part is uh, the upstream sound wave. Yeah. So this is the piezoelectric crystal element, A and B. So it is, they are located across to each other. And in between, the flow is being measured. Okay, There is a distance speed between the two crystals, right? And the B will uh, reflect here. Yeah, so, so there is a transmitted pulse. This, this time here will, uh, between the transmitted pulse, each pulse will be Dependent, of course, on the flow rate yeah, of the, the, the of the whatever fluid or in between the two transducer. Must also depend on the theta, yeah, and the distance. Then using Doppler flow transducer, yeah, similar like the previous principle, this uses the Doppler shift of the scattered wave from the moving medium. So here, for example, the transmitted pulse, and this is the received pulse, having different frequency. Okay, there is a delta T.
So this is uh, one example of the formula from the flow meter. The average flow velocity of the medium equals to the C square, the sound speed in that medium times the delta T, the transit time, the difference between upstream and downstream. Sorry, this is supposed to be uh, the illustration also for this transit time uh, flow transducer. Yeah? The Doppler flow transducer principle is already explained here yeah, using the frequency shift. While this one is for uh, measuring the transit time between the transmitted pulse here and the received pulse here. So C squared times delta T, the transit time between the upstream and downstream, divided by two times D, cosine theta D is the uh, width here, yeah, this D. Uh, sorry, this D. Okay. So D cosine theta will be equals to this distance, yeah, this distance between A, the horizontal distance between A and B. And uh, that will uh, create this uh, theta is the angle between the crystal axis and the flow axis. For example, an ultrasonic flow transducer is designed to measure the mean velocity of a gaseous medium, such as respiratory air. The crystal axis makes a 30 degree angle with the flow and the crystal's airspace 1.25 centimeter apart. Calculate the air velocity if the transit time is 8.6 nanosecond. If the speed of sound in air is 335 meter per second. So this is in air, yeah? in respiratory air. In, uh, the, in the lung or in the bronchi, for example. Here, the answer is 4.4 centimeter per second. If you are using Doppler flow transducer, then it will be based on frequency shift, similar like the previous example, previous slide. The frequency change of the wave scattered from the particulate matter flowing in the vessel. So delta F equals to the plus minus of the FC, the transmitter frequency, times the cosine theta plus cosine phi. Theta here is the angle of the transmit crystal axis to the flow axis. Phi is the angle of the received crystal axis to the flow axis, times to the V divided by C. Okay. V, uh, C, I think, is the velocity in the medium. V is the flow uh, rate, the velocity of the flow rate. So this is how it looks like if we use in uh, Doppler flow meter. This is the piezoelectric crystal tra transmitting the wave. And then this is another piezoelectric crystal receiving the wave. And the transmitter here at five megahertz is in the vessel wall. And the receiver will receive the frequency with plus minus delta F, which is a function of this flow rate inside that vessel. Yeah? And then it will be mixed. So similar like the principle of Doppler meter in the other slide. And then filtered to receive delta F, F, as F tra uh, transmitted minus F received. And then to using frequency discriminator and zero crossing detector, we will obtain the flow signal produced by, uh, with produced by pulse at each point where F through zero and integrated to be a D6 signal. So similar like the previous flow diagram. And then the flow signal, will this one will recognize the repetition rate of the pulse to produce the flow signal. This represents the mean flow velocity in that tube in centimeter per second. Okay, final subtopic of this uh, chapter is on the use of ultrasound to image the brain. Okay, as electroencephalography uh, technique. Uh, yeah. So. Echo encephalograph uses a scan mode, so time uh, based or depth based imaging. Fire one microsecond bursts here, for example, this probe. One yeah. <clears throat> uh, of two to three megahertz ultrasound energy at 500 bursts per second. So there are 500 bursts at within one second, each burst is one microsecond uh, duration and having a frequency of two to three megahertz. The oscilloscope connected for A scan will show the traces. So for example, this is the showing illustration of a 
an uh, subject head yeah with with the brain and then with the bone and then with the skin and subcutaneous tissue the probe is located on the outside but is uh, attached to the head okay transmitting and then the echo is being detected okay so this is how it shows a sieve of plasma mass three meter from the correct position is often considered to be pathological and may indicate the presence of tumor or other lesion inside the brain if there is a sieve of more than three mil three millimeter so uh, for example this might due to the lateral ventricular wall this is due to the septum and uh, this is the complex echoes from the probe screen probe from the probe and the skin subcutaneous tissue and the bone etc this uh, pulses so the transducer is then moved from right to left here for example and then the, here is the transducer moved from left to right okay so it will create a, something like that reflected image displacement of the midline here if there is this is normal okay so it means uh, there is a peak in the middle here due to the this uh, lateral the bodies of lateral vent, uh, ventricles and septum pellucidium in the middle of the brain yeah there is a gap there in between uh, the two brains and when there is a displacement of the midline however from when you uh, first move from the right to left and then left to right it, it doesn't go inside the middle part that will indicate that there is tumor or aneurysm or other lesions yeah. so here when the sp uh, spike is like this then it will be it, it indicates a solid thing but when the spike is like this one spike only it is indicated it is filled with fluid yeah so something so this is the end of this ultrasonography technique from the principle the transducer and how it is being used as an instrumentation for medical purposes are there any questions from the students so far Yes. Uh, uh, is it different uh, the the receiver placement it, between sorry, uh, the, the, the presentation? Can you speak again louder? Hello. Yes. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, but you need oh. to speak louder. I think the microphone is okay. But you speak. Oh. Okay. So. Um, is it affect the the measurement if we put the receiver in different place? As I saw there are two different placement. Different place. placement, yes. If okay. you put in different placement, yes, it will affect the image. Like in the last uh, slide, for example, right? It is we deliberately move the transducer from. This is for imaging the brain, right? So first is here from right to left, then the other one is from left to right. So being shifted from different different directions. So from here we know where where is in the position inside our brain there is in uh, indicator of some abnormalities mm -hmm. position, yeah. In the, and then we will all know also from the spike whether it is solid to more or otherwise. Aneurysm. What is aneurysm, by the way? I think blood. Uh, need to check. Anyone knows? Aneurysm. Because you receive. Okay, aneurysm is. Uh, in the artery. A ballooning yeah. or weakened area in an artery. Aneurysm over occur in the aorta at the brain. See here, also in the brain, uh, back of the knee, intestine, or spleen. A ruptured aneurysm can result in internal bleeding and stroke. So you know some some of the 
stroke can be two, right? Can be caused by one, the blockage of the blood, which we usually will cause paralysis. But two, the more dangerous one is bleeding. Yeah, uh, the 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 vessel rupture. If it is in the brain, then usually it can cause coma and then eventually death. Internal bleeding, yeah, and this is quite fatal. I have a friend who I have a friend who just recently died due to due to this stroke in the head. So yeah, then we know, for example, if it is fluid filled, then it may cause by aneurysm, for example, or solid, then it may cause it may be caused by tumor. So since this is operated in a scan, that's why the transducer is being moved from left to right and then right to left so that we know more or less the position or at least first indicator that there is some abnormalities i think at the current technology then they will proceed with another mode of imaging maybe using mri to really know the position of that uh, abnormalities yes but in it the position will determine the reconstructed image. I hope this answers your question. I think this is for is echoencephalography, but similar case also with other in parts of imaging. Yeah? So uh, depending on what do you want to see from the from the part of the body. I'm speaking as a biomedical engineer. So this is a disclaimer because this will be uploaded in YouTube. <laughs> Hope everyone will not be objecting. So from the details is uh, known by the ultrasonographer, yeah, the uh, subspecialist of radiologist, radiologist or doctor. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Christopher? So far, no, sir. No. Okay, other people with other question or similar? No, sir. No question. No, sir. No. Mm -hmm. Teddy, Diana, no question. No, sir.